Hey, welcome to another episode of Three Conservative Gimps, where we give you the information for you to make an informed decision at the ballot box. So we've got a great show for you today. We have a full house here at the staff, uh, full staff here, which is good. Somebody's back from Florida uh, looking fit and fiddle. Maybe a little runny nose, but he's here. That's good. So we got a lot to talk about. So let's start with the man with the plan all the way from Jensen Beach. Now in Muskogee, let's welcome Lloyd Mendenhall. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I, I survived. I survived uh, South Florida Drone Meetup 24. Good, good. Barely, but I survived it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, there was no stopping. I, I missed out on at least a month's worth of maps, you know, so <laughs> I'm still trying to catch up. It's like, wow. Them old people just flat wore my ass out. Excuse the language, but <laughs> wow. They were just, I couldn't keep up with all them old farts. Well, but, well you had <laughs> some great weather down there, which is good. It was beautiful. There was, uh, there was a little wind a couple of times, but nothing right. major. And there was, a, there was one morning we got up, and it was a little nippy in the air, and you had to wear a jacket because... You know, that yeah, it was okay standing out in the sun, but if the wind whipped from the right direction, it's like, yeah, okay. It's a little right. cool, but other than that, no, it was a beautiful weather. Uh, had, had had a fun time, you know, and uh, just got to meet so many of the people that I've watched on YouTube. That was probably the biggest thrill of it all, was meeting all the people that, you know. I've met a couple of them, but uh, uh, like Mike cool. Wright and uh, Rodney Bell, I'd met them, and uh, I'm trying to think who else was there that I'd met, but anyways, but yeah, I had a I had a ball down there. It was uh, it's what I needed to get my to get out of my head and get out and yes. know that when I came it's, back, you know, that meant I could still I could still continue on. So you know, and it's what I needed. So uh, that's yeah. right. All right, let's welcome all the way from the blue state of New York. Here it is, Charles Golovsky. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Art. Hey, Lloyd. Good to see you again. Um, Everybody in the chat. Hey, Charles. Yep. Uh, man, uh, a few words. <laughs> well, all right, let's start off with the elephant in the room. We, Israel got attacked by Iran yesterday. <laughs> Uh, sending uh, hundreds uh, of drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles their way. So, uh, but it sounded like they they got most of them. Oh, what you got there, Charles? Is that one of your gummies? Well, no. You said talk about the elephant in the room. Oh, the it's elephant. The elephant yes, that I have in, in my in the room. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. All right. Hey, let's not forget to t say hi to everybody in the chat. Yes, we have Ronnie. God bless America. I guess he's watching over at uh, Twitter. No, he's watching on my my fishing channel. I okay. screwed that up. I don't know how that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I had Twitter and, going, and, but it's my fishing channel. Yeah. And oh I well. Met, I met Ronnie. Uh, and then we got Steve Knowles. Then we got Michael, cool cat, and we got uh, Charles Kolesky. Andrew is here, yeah, and we got Chuck Kovacin. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you guys, and we got a good crowd tonight, which is good. Yeah, so, yeah we got a good uh, crowd tonight. Uh, so Iran attacked uh, because Israel. Uh, launch an attack or a, a drone, was it a drone strike or a missile strike on a uh, in so, uh, some building that had two Iranian generals who were probably there to help Hezbollah and, yeah. and Hamas yeah, there. They, I think that was, in, they were in Syria. Uh, yes. 
They oh, Syria. It. Okay. Yeah, they launched it into, if I'm not mistaken, and I have to, I'd have to go back because that was a week or so ago. And uh, right. I, Iran said that they were uh, 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 said that they were going to counter strike, but right, but, uh, yeah, right. but you know, but the difference is, was you know, this was a direct from Iran directly into Israel, mm -hmm. which is what something that Israel did not do. They attacked in Syria, where the uh, right. generals and six of the family members was were there and. Uh, they were ones that were the one. They were part of the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard, uh, right? The IRG, and right. they were they were involved with the planning and execution of some of the attacks that have been made on Israel, mm -hmm. uh, including mm -hmm. the the one in uh, the one on the seventh of. How long right. has it been now? The seventh of. When was the attack? Was on it October? Israel? October. October. Yeah, October seventh. Yes. Well, wow, it's been going. It, I, I don't know. Suddenly, time is. I've lost track of time, and it's like, I thought this had just been going on a month or so, but no, it's been going on for quite a while now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I, my mind was elsewhere during part of that, so I, you know, excuse <laughs> me for. It's just like October. I, I was thinking September, October, something like that. And I'm going. That can't be right. That was like last year, but yeah, it was. But, uh, 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 but yeah, it was, you know, I think what, I think Iran may have overplayed their hand a little bit, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. They might, and right. then again, they might have wanted to escalate this too. Right. Right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, they really don't give a shit if uh, they get uh, new. You know, no. they really don't care. Yeah, you know? they don't. That, that, and that's what's different about their religion and our religion. You know, they yeah. want to die. So, uh, well, I, I was listening today uh, about some of these protests that are, or support for uh, the Palestinians. Right. And, uh, you know, these are supposed to be peaceful protesters, and yet they're cheering the fact that uh, missiles were launched against Israel, and they're cheering uh, the death of, you know, they're, they're chanting death to Israel and stuff like that. If these were true peaceful act, peace activists, they wouldn't be cheering that. If they were true humanitarians, they wouldn't be cheering that. Yeah, they uh, would be protesting against the yeah. mosque. Yeah, and the right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Andrew says we don't want to confront Iran on this. This administration may not want to, Andrew, yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it wasn't exactly a surprise attack. Uh, yeah, like Gage puts out, but yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, yeah Ronnie, me... I, I enjoyed meeting you too. Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it was a real pleasure meeting you. And we got Johnny D, RC. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, so, yeah, the, so they launch these drones like from hundreds of miles away, and it's it's not like they're going you know they're going supersonic or high speed. So it's going to take hours for them to get there. So it's eh. yeah, and so, yet. Guess I don't need that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's as soon as I stepped off the friggin' plane in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I started sneezing. It's been like that for, you know, ever since. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It's just well, the drink, allergies. Bring your fluids, sir. Yeah, calm well, that cough down. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. a recola. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I've got some stuff. Matter of fact, I got oh. some, some right there. Who is? This guy, Amir. Huh? Amir uh, Odinev. Yeah. Okay, he must be a troll. Oh, I didn't. Let me uh, check this. Let's, okay. Let's do that. Buh. Yeah. Buh and bye. And bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so uh yeah so it, it's not like uh but on on the downside is israel had to expend a lot of uh weapons to knock those those drones and all this stuff coming depleting and and this is probably why iran's doing this plus you gotta remember hezbollah has 150 thousand rockets at their disposal yeah yeah so well and uh the other thing that was the you know is this it wasn't just israel who was responding we had the united states we had uh jordan we had the uk all of them were scrambling jets and and or you know uh, launching missiles to take out the drones you know right and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so it, nobody, the sane countries in the Middle East, if there are any, don't want to see this escalate because it's bad. It's bad business for everybody, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they, if it, let's say it doesn't go nuclear, but it breaks out into an all-out world war, well, they can't sell their oil. You know, that's right. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, and I, I hate to say it, sound like that this but the war would do us good because then we would suddenly have to start producing our own oil right and <clears throat> that would be well, good for our economy you know mm -hmm. because we'd get shut out you know especially if we side with israel which is what we should do uh mm -hmm. this administration uh i guess it uh yeah iran is part of the drone community now yep yes. that's yeah that's right bill but I, I just assume we didn't invite him to the South Florida drone meetup next year. I just, you know. Yeah, there you go. Don't really, really, you know, uh, you know. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 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 yeah, that threw my chain of thought. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I am still so damn tired from being out there. And t I got way too much sun. I was up too many hours a day. I saw, I... I was actually up at sunrise. They got up to go out and do a sunrise video. I got up and looked out my bedroom window and took a picture with my camera on my phone. <laughs> there and, you um, go. Then went down and got dressed, went down and got me some coffee. You know. So, no, there you go. Yeah. Nope. But, uh, yeah, so I forgot where I was going with that. But, uh, uh, oh, if a war breaks out there, you know, it's going to hurt the Middle East uh, as far as their economy, you know, right. Jor Jordan and Saudi and all those places, because, you know, eventually the, you know, the Suez Canal probably would get shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, oil exports would dwindle to nothing. We'd become uh, oil right. independent again because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'd be forced to. So we'd have to do something. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, I have Florida fever on it. You're right. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah, it, it, uh, 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 it would, it would definitely be bad business for the rest. And that's why I think places like Jordan and some of those others, that's why right. they were willing to jump in because they like, Hey, we're not part of this crowd. And mainly right. they were, I think what it really come down to is they were pissed off because I, Iran launched across some of these countries without getting their explicit permission right mm -hmm. you know well and, and i think what may happen what israel may do is they may attack iran's uh, oil facilities and yeah. they, they they do have a port that they could either uh you know destroy a lot of uh infrastructure there and possibly mine that port to where yeah. it'll it'll keep any uh, you know any exports or imports coming in. The only way they'll be able to move anything is over land, you, you know, through uh, their allies like uh, Russia might uh, supply. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know, and I don't think Russia wants it either. They they're they're kind of you know they're they're Russia's getting. Uh, you know they're they're scraping the bottom of the barrel too, you know, because they've been mm -hmm. this war's gone on a lot longer in the Ukraine yeah. than they expected it to. So, 
Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of countries over there that have got that have good reason for this war not to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to. It just means there's a lot of reasons for it not to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, That's true. We'll, we'll just That's have true. to. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, it's uh, it's a mess, and I think like I, I was, I don't know if we, I said it here or not, but when I saw or heard the these people, you know, these so-called activists, peace activists, you know, mm -hmm. out there, you know, <clears throat> cheering that Israel had gotten attacked, you know, that mm -hmm. that the missiles had been launched towards Israel, and these were Americans. This was on our own soil. These people were cheering this. Now, if these were true peace activists or humanitarian activists, they mm -hmm. don't want a war because if they were truly like that, they you know that's the last thing they want, you know. But they're not; they're just a bunch of, you know. And it's a sad state of affairs that this is what the country has come to, you know. Well, and and mm, where did they get those dumb ideas? Oh, from schools that they went right. to. Yep. So. This is yeah. why I want to bring back uh, uh, insane asylums, and I think uh, the first people that should go to those insane asylums should be, uh, you know, college professors from yeah. uh, liberal, not the hard sciences. I'm talking about the liberal arts division, and, and these yeah. idiot professors that are spout now this. Uh, right crazy stuff because yeah, I remember I back in the day people used to think boy that's kind of that's kind of nutty talking there yeah and now it, it's like whoa, 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 it's whoa. acceptable those yeah. those those guys those those nut cases have gone on to become administrators and heads yep. of college and then mm -hmm. they've trained generations of teachers and right it just it just keeps getting further and further oh, away from and, and they've infiltrated corporations. Oh yeah. And installed this the uh, DEI crap. Uh, and there's there. there, I've been, you know, of course uh I haven't had as much time lately to do what I wanted, but I've you know, just recently I was reading that there are a lot of these companies now that are firing these DEI executives that they've hired. Good, they're they're good, firing good. them because you know, it's hurting their business. It's it's not good business practice mm -hmm. because this diversity, uh, In, equity, uh, inclusion, equity yeah. inclusion, yeah, it's just another form of racism. Yeah, mm -hmm. because what it comes down to is racist against old fat fat white guys like me. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. Asians too. And Asians, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Anybody that's uh, got a better education, you know, yeah, because well, uh, the Asian community has a strong, you know, strong ethic, work ed ethic, and and education ethic. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it doesn't matter which which country because it's part of the the it's really part of the Asian culture going back, you know. Yep centuries you know it, yep. long before communism stuff uh uh yellow rose drones uh uh been lee. lurking huh no lee 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 yeah. Sing. yes yeah. i got to meet him and i got to meet mm -hmm. uh i Gabriel, met him and they were both very nice people uh mm -hmm. so yeah i was i was gonna go back to what uh uh, most of the peace, this is what Cool Cat writes, most of the peace activists are useful idiots who have a similar understanding of history to a cat. That's about yep. the truth of it, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two days wasn't long enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot. I, uh, I would have, uh, but to be honest, man, I was down there I left on Thursday and got back on. Oh, Cool Cat makes Tuesday. a good point. Asians don't nurture a victim culture where everything is someone else's fault. Yeah, and that's true. That is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, it, it's it's this, 
and that's what we've got here in the United States, a culture of victimhood, you know. Mm -hmm. And as long as everybody's allowed to be a victim, I mean, and that's not to say there aren't there aren't people that have not been victims, you know. There are many, many children that have been, I mean, just you just look at the news, I mean, like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the sexual deviance that's, that's out there. And he's, uh, it, yes. It, it's starting to become the norm rather than the, than the you know, obscure. You know, it's, right. it's like, uh, who is it that's, oh, uh, P. Diddy, you know, yep. you know, or Diddy Combs or whatever his name is yeah. this week. You know, yeah. Daddy or whatever he's going by. Uh, I mean, you know, there he is. And it turns out he's got, he's really really got a bad uh, uh, scandal, you know, and uh, yep. it's mm -hmm. like, uh, and here's something, here's something, and this goes along the line of some of our politics we've been talking about here, because we're conser conservatives, that's the name, uh, uh, Representative Getz, uh, <clears throat> you know, the one that helped uh, oust uh, the Speaker of the House. Yeah, Kevin McCarthy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you know that there was an ethics in investigation going on with Getz? And he had approached McCarthy to see if he could get it stopped. And do you know what it was about? Mm, no, all I know that I know there was an invest investigation against him. I don't know what it was about. The investigation was that he slept with a 17-year-old girl. Ooh. Oh, my. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and By he the wanted way, that he this, wanted that investigation this. stopped, and McCarthy says, "I I can't do that. That's in committee. That's the ethics committee. I can't uh -huh. tell the ethics the head the chairman of the ethics committee not to investigate that. You know, mm -hmm. and so McCarthy made it. Or I mean, Getz made it personal against McCarthy. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, and Getz was just here last weekend for the uh, Colorado State Assembly. Yeah, one in Pueblo and. I mean, and my problem is with Getz is the fact that he's not got that many years' experience, and he's thrown his weight around like he's a senior. Right. And, and he's right. he's causing the party to split. Right. That's right. And uh, so there was, there was a big hoopla in uh, Pueblo last yeah. week where uh, someone from the Denver Gazette was uh, – escorted or asked to leave and but you know i mean it, it shows bad form but this is a private uh you know club or, yeah you know they could do whatever they want if they want to kick somebody out because they don't like them or something they can so it's it's a double edged sword right there, but yeah, just, it just seems well uh, the, the, really the, bad for him. I and I don't know the circumstances, but if the guy wanted to shout and carry on and protest, he had the right to do it right out on a public, uh, public right. uh, sidewalk. But this is a reporter for the Denver Gazette. Uh, Ag again, if it's a private, here's the thing, and this is what's happened to our society. Yeah, we have won. We don't have reporters anymore. Everybody, yeah. everybody has an agenda that is part mm -hmm. of the journalism. There's no journalists left. Yeah, they're have, advocates. They're they're advocates or editorialists. You know. Yep. Mm -hmm. and that's it. So, and the fact that they think, and, and the other thing is, is, the fact they think because they are a journalist or have a, a journalist degree, that they have a right. Mm -hmm. to know everything about everything and about anything. It's mm -hmm. not true, you know. Yeah. We and are allowed, we, we have allowed. They make up shit, too. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, most, I, I'll be honest with you, I think I would trust the National Enquirer to report better news than what most right. of these agencies do now, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> and and uh, I, I sent you right, to this. About uh, their own script, script readers, yeah. Nixon talked about this in one of his uh, interviews, uh, where yeah, he yeah. said, that, "Don't forget about the uh, industrial media uh, imperialism." Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 and and, and that's true. And just 
just because I'm, I've I've got a press pass over here that I could have used for something, you know, and I've had it. It's a permanent press pass. It came, I actually got it. Uh, well, that's a long story, but anyways, I could, I've never, I've never offered to try and park somewhere special. It's just not, you know, it's not my thing. But the fact that, you know, <clears throat> and this is where, to some, to some extent, we've, well, it's like, it's real simple. On the left, uh, you're right, Ronnie, and that's exactly, on the left, the Bill of Rights only work under certain circumstances. They want to, you know, like when it comes to their journalism, boy, they want to have that freedom of speech. Right. But only if it's the speech they want said or read. Mm-hmm. We, on the other hand, don't have that right because our stuff is instantly deemed hate speech. Hate speech, yeah, that's correct. And that's then correct. the same goes to, you know, uh, the Second Amendment, uh, the, the uh, keep right their arms. Bear. Yeah, that only applies to their private security that protects them wherever they go. But mm-hmm. to the average person like me, I don't have a right to carry a gun to protect myself. Right. And I can't afford to hire private security, you know, so what do I do? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's where we have so- somewhere in society have managed to allow and and pervert our own constitution we've allowed it to be to happen and there's a not let's see speech someone else hates and that's exactly yeah there you go right there that's it <clears throat> every journalist is potentially everyone is a journalist potentially so you're right it means nothing msm has uh mainstream media pro- yeah mainstream media yeah it's become propaganda for alt-left politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah, and you're right. I, I do the same thing. I'll I'll look at something. And just every so often, I'll glance at one of the mainstream media. It's like, oh yeah, and you'll God. go wonder if that's true. <clears throat> well, yeah. I always fact check. You know. I, yeah, that's that's and right. My cousin, who who I talk about a lot, Travis, he's a conservative, but he'll call me up and he'll say, I just saw this. And he says, it can't be true, can it? And I look it up. And he says, or he'll call me up with a fact and say, you know, I just read this and blah, 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 blah. I said, let me get back to you. And I call him back five minutes later and said, that's clickbait. That's just BS. Yeah. That's, you know. <laughs> and, and we do it here, uh, not on this show, but in YouTube. Yes. We all try to grab those headlines, you know. Because, right. Yeah. Because well, we're yes. all potentially journalists, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and or, in our case, we're editorialists here on this mm-hmm. show. Right. But mm-hmm. uh, we, you know, and that's what's created. That's you know the fact that it's allowed. Now that doesn't mean I want them taking down our videos because we said something that they didn't agree with. Because that's just as wrong, you know. Uh huh. I mean, as you and I both, you know, uh, you've you had a couple taken off uh, had to do with COVID or something. And I had something. Yeah, you know, something like that. Something yeah. like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was like, and then it's turned, why they, they waited until it was all over and then decided to pull those. It's like, you know, a year or so after that happened that they pulled it, so. Yeah. But uh, I don't even know, what, I never did figure out what they were complaining about, but. Yeah. That was just, you know, <clears throat> and that's the problem we have. We've got, we allow these organizations to, do what they do and you know mm-hmm. we're getting what we paid for right mm-hmm. and, and the thing i like about trump is when he was president he would throw it back at those reporters yeah 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 and he he you know and that's what <laughs> republicans should have been doing like 40 years ago if they would have been refuting this uh this uh, stupid refrain, you're racist, you're yeah. sex, homophobe, and blah, 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 blah. You know, it, because all that is. I know, Andrew, it, I do. It, it means, oh, we, they don't have anything to refute our ideas, so they'd say we're racist. 
Right. So, because they, they don't have any comeback for that. Yeah, and, Andrew, I was, he says, you do have a right to bear arms to protect yourself. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the left doesn't think we should have that right. Right. But it's okay for them to go out and hire bodyguards and, and private security to go out mm -hmm. so that they don't get harassed and so they don't get attacked, you know, but right. it's it's not, they. But and this is the left's perspective on everything, they only use parts of the Constitution when they need it, you know. Right. But they They're don't allow it. Yeah, it's, it, well, and it, their interpretation of it. And even, right. even when the Supreme Court goes so far as to, uh, you know, answer that question. They still disagree with it. Mm -hmm. I, I remember <clears throat> living in Oklahoma, Trail of Tears is a big thing here. And that's right. when the state of Georgia was trying to take the Cherokee land uh, from the, the Native Americans. And uh, by the time the decision came that they were being forcefully removed to Oklahoma, uh, it was winter time and they weren't prepared for you know, if they had moved in the spring, you know, it would have been better and, you know, it would have been easier. But they had cases before the Supreme Court, and in the end, the Supreme Court sided with the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. But Andrew Jackson's told the ch Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, says, okay, then just hike your little butt down there to Georgia and you enforce it, because I ain't sending one U.S. troop to help enforce this, your decision. You know, uh -huh. which it really clouded my opinion. Yeah, really, my opinion of Andrew Jackson changed, you know, yeah. because he was mm -hmm. not, you know, he was not going to, even though the Supreme Court said that, that the treaty that the nation had was as a, they were an autonomous nation, and, uh, but Andrew Jackson wouldn't send troops down to Georgia, so they were forced to move. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Along with, you know, like the, the Seminoles out of Florida, the, the, the Choctaws, the Creeks, the Chickasaws, you know. Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. You, was on Arch, you need to Arch build Mission up channel. those watch hours. <laughs> you need to pay attention and not to put. I know. I thought I clicked on X, but uh, right, yeah, I clicked yeah. on the wrong icon when I. Yeah, see, you weren't awake enough from that nap. No, I'm, I was. But, and, and this is the problem when we get presidents who decide that they're not going to agree, you know, and they're, and mm -hmm. that's where if we allow them to do that, then they, they are taking away the constitution, the part of the constitution that allows for checks and balances. We're yep. taking that away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is, this is the problem, you know, right. Uh, right. But, uh, and that's why, uh, this loan forgiveness thing, you know, they said, no, you can't do it, but yet, He's still doing it, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's working around at it, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's really not debt forgiveness no. for students. It's just pushing, you know, who's going to pay it on the taxpayers because it's, it's yeah. no free lunch. Right. Uh, it's right. Not like they they said, didn't just draw a line through that and said no more because right. the banks are the one who actually issued the loans, you know. Right. And uh, unless they're going to give the bank every dime that they loaned out in that, you know, and that's even if they do do that, that means somebody's got to pay for it. And that's where it comes to the taxpayers having to pay for it. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. but Mickey, uh, I'm going to try and do some more cooking stuff. I'll probably do some in the, <clears throat> the Philippines while I'm out there. I'll do some video on Philippine cooking. Well, Here's not. a unique take. <clears throat> Go to the Philippines and get your fiance to cook haggis for you. <laughs> that would be a twist. Philippine haggis. Oh boy. Well, they got something similar to that. It's called balut. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, but tell yeah, them a Scottish they're Scottish they're haggis cooked by Philippines. Yeah. That would be give you a worldwide audience right there. It's like, yeah, would yeah. be even funnier is like, if you actually yeah, ate there, the stuff. Yeah, there's another uh, thing that'll give me dysentery while I'm out there. 
Uh, all right. Well, uh, let's go on to our final. That's uh, true. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had an attack at a mall in Sydney, Australia, where a lone person started stabbing people. And there have been uh, a few that required uh, emergency uh, uh, medical care. I think there was one or two that are in critical condition. And, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, the thing that I found, well, where I found out about this is if you, for those of you who don't know who Ryan McBeth is, He's a an analysis. He he did analysis and uh, weapons analysis for uh, uh, the military when he served in, I think the the Marines or the Army. Uh, so he's got a YouTube channel where he talks about disinformation, and he talked about this attack and how China could be using that for disinformation to split the people's trust in the government in Australia. For example, they'll say, oh, it was because it, it was in a, uh, a Jewish area. It, they're, they're saying, oh, it was a, an attack by an Islamist. Right, and, right. So they'll try to spin it that way. Or if he if it turns out this person's not an Islamist, they'll they'll spin it some other way. Yeah. To make it sound like the police were in that and that the yeah. because they did know this individual for uh, for quite a while and yet because of their you know, their laws they could not really do anything about it. So it was uh, well. The first thing that I saw when I read that, or I thought, when well, I should say, when I read that, you know, because you know, Greg and I are, are pretty good friends, and we, right, and he grew up in Australia post gun. In other words, the the gun ban was pretty much, and his father had never been into guns, so he just didn't grow up around him. Period, and he doesn't understand the. He doesn't understand. American history and society he can't he just can't get his head wrapped around it you know it's just mm -hmm. it's it's like <clears throat> some people can eat monkey brains all day long you know but if you've never had them and you've never grown up around them or you've never tasted them and you, you the whole concept is just revolting you know Mm -hmm. And I only use that because we were t Grant and I were talking about that the other night. But anyways, uh, but you know, it's it's a revolting idea, you know. And uh, but yet there's a, a whole culture of people that that's they they eat, you know, live mm -hmm. monkey brains. Yeah, and uh, it's 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 just disgusting. Well, that's the way a lot of people look at our American gun culture. You know, mm -hmm. but it's part of who we are. You know, we were frontiersmen. We were, we were revolutionaries. You know, mm -hmm. at, at a time. You know, and uh, it's it's just ingrained into us. It's you know, passed down from great grandfathers to grandfathers to you know fathers to right. sons to great grandsons you know, all the way down. And <clears throat> well, so over in Australia, they got rid of them back. I don't know, back in the nineties, eighties. Yeah, uh, in the nineties they had a they had a, a a mass shooting there, and the government just went over the edge over it. They just uh, right, you know, and mm -hmm. the people wouldn't stand for it, and so they had this big giant gun mm -hmm. buyout. But now we need a knife buyout, right? And and that was my point is that if a bad person, or if a Islamist, or yeah, it doesn't matter, any person filled with hate. If they want to do harm, they're going to find a way, mm -hmm. no matter yep. what, you know. Uh, and you can't, you know. Uh, <coughs> there, there's been people who've been killed by a piece of rope and a stick, mm -hmm. you know. 
just wrap it around there and twist it real tight until it cuts off there they're dead you know it's not a mm -hmm. mass shooting but it's still a killing you know and mm -hmm. uh I mean, there's 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 if an if a man's heart is filled with evil they are going to commit acts of evil no matter what right. is in their way you know <clears throat> and uh you know it's it's just it's a sad sad thing but so mm -hmm. banning one thing <clears throat> to say that's bad is is you know uh, that's not the answer the answer is always comes back to let's enforce the laws that we have let's let's enforce right. you know and so this was a perfect let's see largest mass shooting in america was done by the u.s government wounded knee you're right mm -hmm. the wounded knee massacre yeah mm -hmm. yeah colorado has uh yep <clears throat> that'd be sand creek yeah Sand Creek, Mass and yeah. where did that happen? Oh, that was down there by uh, Lamar and Los Angeles. Yeah. You know, when I was in boot camp, there was a movie called Soldier Blue that came out, and it dealt with that. That was what it was about. And one of my best friends I was in boot camp with was a big, huge uh, Native American. He was like... Uh, I think he was a, either Apache or, or Sioux. I can't remember. He was, a, he was a big old boy. And we went to see the movie, none of us knowing what it was about. It was our first weekend. It was our first on-base pass that we'd gotten. So we walked across the hill and over the, to the other base where they had the theater at. Went in there, and it's, oh, it's a western, you know. And then we just all sat there. And it was uh -huh. like, oh, my God. And it, it, it went through the whole massacre thing. It's like, oh, you know, and I, yeah. I just looked at him. I said, I had no idea that's what this movie is about. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you're from Colorado, aren't you? And I said, yes. I said, and to be honest with you, I never knew this existed. I said, for wow. some reason, I never had heard about it, you know. I and, I well, learned about it when I was in college back in yeah, the 80s. Right, well. Yeah, I took history of Colorado and... Yeah. It was a fun class, and I learned yeah. about that. And uh, in the same area is um, uh, the the internment camp at the Granada. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, camp Amachi. Yeah, Camp Amachi. Wasn't there one in Meeker called the Meeker Massacre? That's one I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. Well, and then there was the Ludlow Massacre, which is uh, down by... Uh, South of Pueblo. Yeah, so 1879. That's the one I was thinking of. Meeker Massacre or Meeker Incident, the White River War uh, against the Utes. Yeah, that's the one I was uh, thinking of. That's the one that Soldier Blue was, uh, the movie was made out of it. And, uh, well, you know, it, it was like, uh, it was one of those things that, you know, I never knew existed and I was just like uh, blown away and I said, mm -hmm. you know, how do you look at a guy that's you know, who who uh, who grew up? In, he, I, I'm sure. I'm almost sure he was uh, Lakota or you know one of the Sioux nations. Right. And uh, you know, but you're right. Wounded Knee, uh, Sand uh, Creek, Sand Creek, a Meeker massacre. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just uh, it, you know it was one of those things that you just. Uh, We've had mass shootings, and our gov own government has been responsible for it. Yep. You know, and I'm, you know. Yeah, oh, and don't forget Waco. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But that didn't involve. You talking about David Native Gregg? American. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was. I don't know. I was actually watching it when it happened. We, I. I, we bought a 93 Ford truck, and I was taking it over to get a new key, made, uh, you know, because it only came with one key, and I was getting it set up, and I was, it was doing the initial, you know, I mean, we just bought it over the weekend, and this was like on a Monday or two, Tuesday, and I took it over to the Ford dealership to finish servicing the new car service, and uh, it was like, I was standing there, I'm watching this standoff, and then all of a sudden, I see the tank rolling forward. And then the fire break out, and it's like, yep. you know, I, I'm not sure exactly how that all came about. I, mm -hmm. I, I know some things about David Koresh because 
uh, he started out as a Seventh Day Adventist. And of course, I had gone to the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and they had to have a. There was a group of teachers that had started teaching that point, and uh, it had infiltrated all over the Adventist. Uh, you know, not that they weren't had their own wacky points of view. That yeah. this was even crazy. This was even further, and they had to go back through it. Uh, they had to, you know, uh, relieve a lot of the pastors from their uh, from their jobs because they were part of that movement that Koresh was from. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Waco and Ruby Ridge. Now, to me, Waco is different than Ruby Ridge mm-hmm. uh, because David Koresh was a nutcase, regardless. You know. Right. Uh, he fired on FBI agents, ATF agents. You know. Okay, that was right. one thing, but the Ruby Ridge uh, to me that was a patriot doing you know defending his property you know right I I, I don't put those in the same category I, right I, yeah I, I agree with David that. Koresh I kind of and Waco I kind of put him in the category of uh, Jim Jones you know, oh, yeah Jim Jones yeah that's a good example yeah. or or mm-hmm. Jim Jones or uh, uh, yeah, Ruby Ridge was wrong on so many levels. I yep. agree. <clears throat> and, you know, our own government has been known to, you know, and, uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, who's president under Wake, under Waco? That was Bill Clinton, wasn't it? Bill Clinton. Yeah. And who is the uh, attorney general? <laughs> I Janet Reno. Janet Reno. Yep. I'm just not gonna be able to have that damn cigarette, son of a biscuit eater. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go in tonight after the show and take a breathing treatment just because. There you uh, go. Yeah, it's just allergies are just yeah, you know, it's down right, it's right in this part of my chest right now, and it's just uh, yeah, aggravating, you know. Yep. Uh, almost like I'm ready to go back to Florida except I can't keep up with all them old farts out there (laughs) they about wore my ass out Mm -hmm. I'm telling you but uh, anyway so so. anything so follow uh, this guy Ryan Beth he does have a sub stack so a lot of stuff a lot of his videos they can't show on YouTube are over there so Go go check him out, and he also has some really cool merch uh, that he sells, calls uh, Ryan Macbeth in action figures, <laughs> and he's got some cool shirts and ho- hoodies and right. stuff like that, which is really cool. Uh, so he's really big on flags and military coins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's okay. really big on that and patches. Okay, because, yeah. Make sure yeah. you put put his info in the. Uh, All right, I can you know, do that. But uh, speaking of really cool shirts, this is. Oh, this is, you got the fly for fun. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, he he. I've got he, Rodney uh, Bell on. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, uh, Johnny Drone Flyer. But, he he walked up to me and said, "What size are you are?" I said, "Extra large is what I prefer." I could, I'd lost a little weight and I could uh, slip into a large, but I said, "Extra large is just more comfortable." It's just mm-hmm. come here, and he took me over there and gave me one of these. And let mm-hmm. me tell you, it's a quality shirt and it's very yep. comfortable. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, I tell you what, Mike Wright now he he had some really nice shirts. If you ever get a chance to buy Texas Drone Guys shirts, well, I got one of his. Shirts from the uh, Texas uh, uh, model airplane, or, right? You know, one of his shirts, and I wear that quite a bit. Yeah, and the one, the one so he got. Go, go check out Ryan McBeth. Uh, he's got some really cool videos. I just started watching his stuff maybe a, a month ago or so. Right. Uh, right. So go check him out. I will. Uh, put a link, and I'll start putting links in the description. Got to put the links in the description because, 
You know, mm-hmm. and you can edit it afterwards. As I do it all yes, the time. Yes, I could do that. Yep. You know, and put that in there. Put that and, in there. And, uh, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, he, he's got some really cool stuff. He's neither right or left. He's just really big about, uh, you know, disinformation. Right. You know, and how uh, certain factions will use uh, disinformation to get oh, yeah. the... Yeah. People riled up. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's why that's why we appreciate this guy here. He yeah. keeps us on our toes. He's mm-hmm. constant right. I wish he didn't right. talk that's so much right. so we could actually get him some mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's such a talker. But he keeps mm-hmm. us on our toes. Yes. You know, I mean that out of total kindness, yeah. Charles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I uh, I told uh, Ray and Johnny that I will show up next year. So I okay. will try to make it work and still go to the Philippines next year. And uh, yeah, so probably what I'll do is I'll come down there. I want to get there as early as I can on a Friday. So I could... Uh, fly in from Orlando, rent a car, and uh, do some fishing before I get yeah. checked in at the hotel. Right. And then I get slide in the sticks and meet everybody at the pre-show yeah. meetup. And then... Yeah, that was really a good thing. I got to yeah. meet a lot of guys down there that at sticks that, you know... Because once the, the meetup starts on Saturday, it's like... it's. It, well, I kept telling, like, to Bill, I kept saying, getting all these old people to do one thing or the other, back and forth, it's like <laughs> trying to herd cats, you know? Yep. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, you know, it's a, it, mm-hmm. well, I said this to Bill when we were going out to eat because <clears throat> we were going out uh, Sunday night, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, Sunday night, I came home on Tuesday. And we was trying to figure out where to go eat, well... Uh, Captain Ray said he didn't. He'd had a late lunch, so he didn't want anything. And then he comes walking through later and says, "So where are we going to go eat?" He says, "I'd like <laughs> some, I don't know, Chinese." Yeah. Like, we had all ate Saturday night. A bunch of us had already had uh, the buffet. So Bill's like, "Did he just not say if twenty minutes ago that he wasn't?" Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. it, it, it was like that. I did not win a drone at the Florida Drone Meetup, no. Mm-hmm. No, Joey, uh, his daughter won a drone, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there was, uh, yeah, there there, there was uh, some nice nice prizes, but, yeah. you know, my the biggest prize to me was meeting everybody, you know. Right, uh, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. got to meet Ken Dono and Billy Kyle, and, and uh, you They're know. They're cool guys. Yeah, yeah, they are, and uh, Jim Beauchart, I laughed at him. And, yeah, I like and, to meet him. Oh, my God. TJ. Yeah. TJ, guy, yeah. I mean, he's him. just like a tickle yeah. me elmo, you know? He's, yeah, see, He's got he a is. button you push, you know, and it got <laughs> so bad. And Matt, Matty, <laughs> yeah, Matty was down there. Matty says, watch this. I said, all right, now now you're starting to become an abusive because you're picking on him, making him laugh, you know, and he's just... He just giggled his ass off, you know. It was, it was funny, yeah. And uh, but you know, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, meeting meeting TJ. There was there was a bunch of the guys. Yeah. Everybody I met down there, I was happy to meet. Ronnie, Bill, uh, mm-hmm. Bob Dempsey. That was. Yeah, Bob Dempsey. Bob I met Dempsey's him, but... a, char- a character and a half. Yes. We just kept passing each other. Finally, I said, Bob, just, yeah, he's sending me pictures of, I, I didn't know what to look at. Where I didn't have a point of reference for the picture to start out with. That was the problem. He was trying to show me where he's at, but and finally I just said, where are you? And I said, are you down by the, the Southwest Airlines? Because I was down there, and he kept going in when I'd come out. It was like the Three Stooges thing. You know? <laughs> and then and then Bill, uh, uh, Mike Wright was trying to find us. I said, of course, I have on a... I had on black boots, black pants, black shirt, black corduroy jacket, and a black hat, black uh, cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. I said, just look for the because cowboy Because playing Johnny Cash? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I was the man in black when I flew in there. I said, just look for 
the cowboy in black and Santa Claus. I said, you know, I said it's <laughs> it's not hard to miss. I mean, you yep. can't you can't hardly miss this, you know. And about that time, he, but it it was kind of chaotic uh, uh, <laughs> at that airport. But yeah, so yeah. But, well, guys, uh, we've done an hour. Yep. I want to thank everybody in the chat for uh, for coming to the show and. Hope you all have a good uh, Sunday, a good week. I will uh, see you all next week. Yeah. Uh, so take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night, folks. Good night.